Calling it a day for day two of forestry work. Most of the footage you would have seen by now was back there. The great big pile we've been building is back there and most of the woods we thinned. Jake ran a bunch of the pole saw right here and really opened up the edge, which we're excited about. Day three, we have to follow uh, a tradition. We do a dump run with Jake every time he's here. So, break from the forestry to do this. Does this place look different to you, James? Yeah. Jake and I did a bunch of thinning here a couple days ago. I had a short work trip, and now we're back. and going to get back up in here working. And what really is going to happen is we're, th we're thinning this out and kind of opening it up and connecting the top pond area to this main meadow down here a bit. It's looking real good. So today we're going to start working this forest edge here, working our way to the top pond. The top pond is the, up there, that's the dam. Aria, what was your final count? I got 110. Woo! That's an old tree. I guess 98. That was pretty close. I was way off. Good evening everybody, it's the last day of June. James and I are having a nice little evening uh, 
tree watering session and the, the light gets really good to shoot a little into this video for you guys. Sorry, sometimes like in some of the clips with Jacob, the the light is so bright like this and not ideal. And that's, that's tough working near the shade of the trees. It's hard to get good lighting. Um, things are going well. Jake was here in early June for about 12 days and that was awesome. Thank you so much to Jake. We got awesome work done and he's back home and then he's going off to his first big boy job. He's done with equipment and welding school and going off to a full-time job at the end of the summer. So wishing him the best. He's going to do awesome. Behind us is one of the spots where we did work in the video you just watched. I've got the chipper there and I've started to chip some of the smaller branches. One new thing with the chickens, the batch of new ch chicks we raised up, we sold 16 of them to our friends and we also gave them Gandalf. And the reason we gave them Gandalf was the, the second rooster, who we call Bob, is something happened. We don't know if Gandalf got sick or something, but um, Bob went from second in command to the alpha and nearly killed Gandalf. Gandalf had a, we thought his eye was missing, um, but it turned out it was just badly injured. Gandalf was hiding under the coop for a few days, so we took Gandalf out and he lived with the baby chicks. And then the solution turned out to be that our, our friends wanted him. So he's, he's in a better place without Bob picking on him. And then we're going to be, the, the rest of the hens we kept will be working into our herd over the next few months. And that's it for the chickens. We banded the, the male sheep that aren't breeders for next fall. And so they'll just be meat lambs next uh, sometime next year or later this year if they grow fast. And we banded one little goat and the other little boy goats are with some friends. And, um, and otherwise the herd's doing great. Summer's starting to dry things up already, but um, you know, our work putting in ponds and things, we can tell that's paying off. Things are greener near and below the ponds, and even though the ponds are drying up, some of that moisture is going down into the landscape. And, um, and we're just pretty well prepared to get through this summer. We'll cut down, cut down maple and ash trees to feed them, all that kind of thing. So we've got a good game plan for this summer for the critters. It's late afternoon. It's actually evening. The dogs have a big sleep through the afternoon getting ready for the night shift. <laughs> they were completely conked out. Hi, beautiful girls. Hello. Hello. I'm down by the yurt. And now I'm turning towards these... Uh, this little oak area that Jacob and I cleaned up over the last few years. And you can see grass and greenery is doing really well underneath it. And we continued that towards the end of his trip. There's those oaks. There's the pile we made from the work right here and here you can see we did a lot with the pole saw took out quite a few small trees that were crowded too close together good tree spacing for these firs and cedars is something like 12 15 feet apart on average you want them close enough together that they kind of force each other to grow straight but too close and they compete too much and then, you know, clean it up this way. We don't have a bunch of scaffolding for poison oak and blackberry. We're going to be able to grow grass down in here. And you can see from that really green grass I showed you a second ago that in the summertime, the grass in the shade does better than in the open fields. Here in western Oregon, we have cool season grasses rather than warm season grasses. They like... They like moisture and they like cool, you know, 60, 65 degree weather. When it gets really hot and dry, they go dormant. But tree shade can really 
prevent them from going dormant too soon. So trees are going to be a really important part, not just for timber, but also for our pasture. So that's why I keep yakking about trees. So that's it for us. We're spending a lot of time on the deck as things get warmer and just enjoying summer. There is a very naked baby right there. And we're wishing you a good summer and we'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Can you say I love daddy? I love daddy. Can you say I love mama? I love mama. Can you say I love Arya? I love Arya. Can you say I love James? I love Arya. What about James? I love James. I love Arya. What? Can you count to ten? <laughs> Gandalf is going to live with our friends and 16 other girls.